Here's a slide really to illustrate or just to elucidate people on how product managers are actually in channel marketing and sales. Uh, it's like, uh, when a product manager created the product or helped deliver the product, the channel marketing and sales, they're not involved in, in it at all. But in some the channel marketing and sales uh, are actually involved. Start, uh, let's start here in a presentation. Okay, so uh, that uh, some products are sold if you use a distributor. Okay. And the reason you use a distributor is that, that method, you get the most number of customer or end user, and thereby it will maximize uh, your revenue. Okay. So, uh, products that requires a distributor, uh, tumor product goods, that's a great example. Um, uh, so, laundry detergent, uh, uh, plastics. Right? You don't buy it directly from the manufacturer, but you buy it through some intermedi intermediary. Same with groceries. Right? You don't buy the fruits or the meat or uh, dairy product directly from the manufacturer, but you go to a supermarket. So, consumer electronics, example of channels that are used. Uh, Walmart, Best Buy, Fry's, and uh, other stores. Or if they, in order for a distributor to want to carry your product, they do have some set of requirements. These requirements are simply more than just the product specs, the spec the end user would uh, re require. Okay. So these specs um, are listed. Uh, the the, mar the the kind of marketing and even and of course the pricing. Okay, I'm going to talk more about that in subsequent slides. Slides. Okay. So, as I'm now, distributor distributor is more than just the feature and you suspect. And and since their own specification and requirements. Now. So what does us product manager, in order for us to be able to sell the product to the user, we need to understand the distributor's requirement. This requirement in itself is another form of a product creation because you are creating a product for the distributor so they want to sell it uh, to the end user. Okay. All right, so agenda today, I will talk about three things, the distributor requirement, the process owners, and the other and others I found. And the different requirements, these are really just what various uh, that we that sphere require. Yeah. By no means it's not it's not going to be positive. It's just things I've learned from uh, people and and this will help to think about what kind how we are to going to create the product for distributors. Process owner who owns this? Who's responsible in delivering this product and creating this product? Just that I learned some interesting facts and tidbits in order to create the product and what facts are. All right, requirement. I'm going to start uh, really on profit margin. How does it impact our components? This way we can see how how the items we need to consider will impact revenue and what are the items. We need to in it, it's pretty straightforward. You get some product, you want to sell the market price, and an amount to produce, which is the cox, and the profit margin is just the difference of the cox and the market price. Again, we're going to start the same thing as direct sales, but the requirements for distributors, which will add up to the cost. Okay. Now, as the margin play with is such a small, The um, sell to the distributor at lower than a, than a market price because if you're to make some money, you can't sell them at a market price, right? Okay, so distributor margin and our own margin. Okay. Mar margin, uh, what I learned at least for consumer consumer electronics uh, in some large distributor, their target is about 20 to 25%. 
Now, for the remaining parts are our margin, right? A couple of things to think about here based on the margin we have. Um, if that margin that we get from a channel is actually smaller than our corporate target margin, the product needs to think about whether we want to pursue this channel or even at all. Right? What's a long-term strategy? Is the strategy just meeting the margin or is it about um, market share? So those are very two different things. But again, just looking at this picture in channel sales here, then we will understand and you know whether it's actually worth it or not. But what is our true margin here at the end? So I want to talk about the product configuration, a cost. Um, the way I the product configuration, it's really a distributor attempt to make a product unique. The product uh, from those of other distributors that may be carrying the same uh, product for the end user. Uh, there are multiple ways to be more unique. There might be a packaging request, uh, uh, some logo requires, some printing. And uh, the color of the piece and the product itself. Maybe certain uh, mobile uh, telecom provider they want to focus that's uh, bright uh, purple or something like that. What do you want to include? That's another uh, option, right? Or the thing itself. When you package it, the product, that's like some predefined settings. Another one is. Um, of some consumer electronic has already been pre-charged uh, before you, you before you used to have the charge in itself, right? That's a thing. And the here that I have is what you call custom SKU. This is making a unique identifier, unique product ID for the um, product to that uh, distributor. And so that, that it's a defensive measure for the distributor. So they're trying to prevent the end user from making price comparison. Uh, to other desserts through, through Amazon. It's just one way uh, of doing this. Okay. For a product to determine whether these things are possible in an effective way, I want to talk to really is the operations the operations person. Return costs. Um, these are, are what are it or what are uh, the services that we are going to provide to our distributors if a product to be returned. The way I look at two types of returns, return for damaged goods and uh, and return for undamaged goods. Okay, let's talk about for damaged goods. Warranty, right? Right. Um, the returns, product is broken, they want to be replaced. So things that product manager needs to consider is what is the cost? Who is actually doing the replacement? Is your company with the broken product, or is you going to replace it with some existing stock in, in the inventory? Now, there is shipping involved uh, back into the into the into the factory. Who is actually paying for it? Okay. Returning uh, much good really buyers some more costs. Um, Packages are open. You return it. So you want to try to resell them again, or the distributor will try to resell them again. You could repack it, and there's some uh, repack costs. There are restocking costs, and of course, open box there might be a markdown. Of this. I've seen a markdown because of an open package. Now the question is, who is for the uh, the loss out of the markdown? Will you or the distributor, or will the distributor just take it as it is? Now, in determining what is the appropriate cost and um, statistics for uh, for both of the environment and more costs, I would really talk to the product engineering uh, warranty. They figure out what is the failure rate of the product. Okay. And the return rate is probably from the marketing for the buyer's remorse cost. They can research but in terms of how many percent buyers would actually return the product. Okay, so uh, some products require uh, services from time to time, maybe some upgrades or even some even some support. 
Now, who is that you're going to be responsible, right? Um, you can have a call center. You can have a web portal to do this. But are you in your own call center or the, or your distributor call, call center? And what do you use? Now, you are, uh, um, I think um, you're letting a distributor handle this. Well, what is this? What is truly acquired? And if physical visits required, are you going to distribute it to the end user and who's paying for that? Again, things you need to consider uh, into the, uh, the product for the distributors. Uh, logistics is pretty straightforward. Is how we actually deliver it to our, our distributor? Right, so this is the frequency packaging format. That for plus, how do you stack the packages so that, that it would um, fit into the script that's being used by the distributors of warehouse? And, uh, and here is uh, not uncommon that when you sell a product to distributor, the distributor is going to ask you to uh, um, do some joint marketing effort, like an advertisement, create promotion, and a limited time discount. Logistics, uh, the operations person is the logic to talk to, whether you can do the do from the requirement from but it's in a cost effective way. And for marketing, uh, forecasting or some market research in terms of the data distributor has what good advertising channel is in order to maximize the profit, the the revenue. Who owns this product creation? Okay. So that within the factory side will be you. You, the product manager, because okay. you, uh, you are supposed to make sure pro the product is successful, as well as various internal stakeholders find out the facts, what can and can be done. Now, each person with a, a distributor, right? You know, I'm not, you, know, you could actually do by the product manager himself. But it's not common that a manager would actually be responsible for this. And the reason for a manager, you have a, a dedicated salesperson that uh, the time to process uh, um, the relations of building. Uh, so with the relationship, you can also understand what is the nuance of the, of the distributor's requirement, and of course, the negotiation process. Now, you know, in order for to create a product that is vi desirable by, by the distributor, it is a joint effort for both the account managers. They need to work together in order to find what's best for the company as well as for the suit. Okay, others. Here are some interesting things that I found that one need to consider uh, as you create the contract or the product um, or the printing for the distributor. Uh, the first one, finance costs. Uh, this is what um, the way I live. Sometimes when you send it to, a, to the distributor, they might not pay their bills in time. Even if that's specified like a, a delivery or within 30 days net, someone day will be late. So you can create a buffer in terms of your, in terms, in your um, distributor in order to determine the price. Paper. So, um, uh, so you will come. Right. Uh, the referring cost. This is more like if one turn a broken product, we going to do. It. You could actually resell it back. You can fix it, resell it. But you need to consider uh, who's actually responsible for that. Are you going to do it in house? Are you going to outsource it? This is some ways in order for you to recoup the cost. Uh, or, or recoup the loss uh, from from broken back. Not really, just kind of the contracts that uh, um, uh, that, you guys, uh, that that you, that you need to consider when you when you're working with a distributor. Uh, the first one is the most preferred pricing clause. This is essentially when the distributor asks you uh, to sign on paper that you've given them the the, the most pricing for the particular product. 
not difficult to work around with. Uh, uh, there's really two ways to do this. The first one is because each district is more likely than not to have unique requirements, then you can say that based on that particular requirements combination of um, product and services, they have the lowest price. This is um, the custom method. If you create a custom SKU, then because there's no other comparison, you can say this is the lowest, um, or the most better for that particular uh, uh, distributor. The protection clause and the price for the clause, clause uh, are what I'm told you want to avoid as much as possible because they want to eat up your um, your line, um, your top line numbers. Okay. Essentially, is a situation in which uh, the end uh, user have the right to return all of the products that are either at or at some um, or at some amount of money. Right. So you can avoid it because it's going to eat, eat up your bottom, your top line. The loss, on the other hand, is a situation where uh, say you have two distributors selling the same exact product at a hundred dollars each. So in MB, let's call them, and they decided that they want to lower the price from hundred dollars to seventy dollars. Thereby, it forces distributor A to lower the price from hundred to seventy. If A has a protection clause, then it could back to you and say, "Hey, I want you to read that thirty dollars price." Um, the, the cost by the would be because I can't now I, I cannot recoup that cost. Right? That would really eat up your top line. So that just comes toward the end of our uh, presentation here. Uh, so we did talk about what are the various requirements, who are the owner, and what other type of things that you might encounter as you create a product specific for the distributor. Okay. In terms of a product is really more than just meeting the end user spec. It's important that to consider the specification as well because the distributor will also be pushed back to the to the end user. Okay. So to create a product by the, by your distributor, okay, it is between the product manager and the salesperson. Now, the information, what I also see is there's actually a lot of room for creativity because the product itself, it's simply not just the, it's simply, it includes not just product. There's some services, there are contracts, and other that, that is driven by distributor. So there's actually a lot of room for negotiation here other than just lowering the price. Great. So I hope this, these sets of fly have been useful for you. And I hope you learned something out of this. And uh, if you have any questions, comments, and feedback, I'm more than happy to listen. To I'm, I look like this, and I hope that you get to learn something out of this. All right, and have a great day.